Well, good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your patience and for uh, finding your seat. We're parking cars on the 18th fairway. I hope they don't mind here at Happy Hollow, but we have a great problem. This is the Special Olympics Nebraska Champions Together Luncheon. And I'm John Nicely, news anchor with WWT Channel 6. I uh, just have a brief mention for my champion in my life. He's my dad. He's 93, uh, steadfast in his faith, man of character and principle. And uh, it's just great to see him all of these years, year after year, living the same life out in Sydney, Nebraska. I wish he was here that I could, he could hear me say it, but he's my champion today, and I'm sure you have one yourself. Special welcome to those of you who have been through a Reveal the Champion tour, and for those of you who want to learn more about Special Olympics Nebraska, as you leave today, you'll have a flyer with more information on volunteer opportunities and also the upcoming events, including the Polar Plunge. Show of hands. There we go. I knew we had some adventuresome people. We'd also like to thank the uh, Westside High School Sparkles. They were responsible for that great welcome as you walked in the door today. And I'd like to recognize current and past board members from Special Olympics Nebraska. Would you please stand so we can recognize you and thank you for your leadership. Stand up, please. And we also want to thank our table captains. If you'd please stand, uh, thanks for being this with us today. So if you have any kind of a problem with the MC today, talk to your captain. <laughs> I'll talk to them later. And we thank our event sponsor, Gallup. A round of applause, please. <laughs> now to kick things off, we have an important part of our movement. It's called Play Unified. Let's watch. Great, isn't it? It really captures the excitement. Now, please join me in welcoming champions of the Special Olympics Nebraska movement with athletes, partners, and family members. You can be loud for this. Well, a big welcome, and at this time, I'd like to introduce Skylar Simmons, Special Olympics Nebraska athlete, who will sing the national anthem and begin our program. Please rise. Um. 
Jose, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud, proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> The athlete oath has said before each Special Olympics competition, please repeat after me. Let me win. Let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Thank you, Skylar. That was a high note to hit, too, wasn't it? That was great. Thank you, Skylar. Well, while you're eating, notice the centerpieces with photos of our champion athletes as well as some of the facts about Special Olympics Nebraska. The red ball at your table is a special token of our thanks for being here today. And as you know, Special Olympics is a social movement grounded in sport, and sport is universal language, the great equalizer. The Special Olympics unified ball is the most iconic representation of this shareable experience. So when you pick up a ball and you throw it to another and things can change, it's amazing how much a simple action can have such a resounding impact. Let this ball serve as a reminder to connect with our movement in a meaningful and transformative way. And I'll leave you with a quote from Tom Shriver, chairman of Special Olympics. Let us all remember that when we ask, give, or go the extra distance to fight for our athletes, we are fighting for life itself. A soccer ball isn't about a nice event for them, but rather about an urgent movement designed to offer hope and dignity to all of us. And I'd like to introduce Father Ryan Lewis of St. Thomas More, who will give our invocation. Good and gracious God, we gather together on this beautiful day, which is itself your gift to us. And we gather together to bless this beautiful organization of Special Olympics, bless our athletes, their families, our many supporters, especially the benefactors gathered in this room. Bless our food, bless those who go without, and we ask all these things in your holy name, amen. Thank you, Father, and enjoy your lunch. We'll begin, continue the program in just a few minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Please continue eating. We're going to move the program forward so we're um, respectful of your time today. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm Carolyn Chamberlain and I'm the President and CEO of Special Olympics Nebraska. And I want to um, thank you. Some of you are returning guests. Thank you for coming back and to our new guests. So glad you could join us today. The theme of our lunch today focuses on champions, and I'd like you for you to take a minute and think of a champion in your life. This could be a parent or a coach or a teacher or just a good friend. I'm going to tell you about my champion. Her name is Joan. So I first met Joan when I was 22 years old, and I was working in a hospital in California. And Joan was six feet tall and one of the smartest women I had ever met. 
I was newly married, and I was enjoying living life as a responsible adult on my own. So Joan had talked to me a few times about going back to college, and so I would always say, yeah, I'll think about it just to get her off my case. I really was satisfied with where I was in my life. And then one day, Joan got up from her desk, she walked over to my workstation, she picked up the phone, and she dialed the local community college. She said, you're too smart to be doing what you're doing. I want you to talk to them to see what it takes to go back to school. So I took the phone from her hand, and I talked to the person on the other end. So I started with the beginning writing class, and I, that eventually grew into full-time study. Eventually, I did earn a degree, and in that process, Joan moved on to do great work in Washington, D.C., and then Chicago. The ironic thing about this story is that I actually ended up with her job a few years later as the Director of Marketing and Communications. I'd always seen myself in a support role, but she saw so much more potential in me, and it was her encouragement and her vision for me that changed the course of my life forever. Yes, I had to do the work, but she was my champion. I make it a point to visit her in Chicago, and she cries every time I thank her for her wisdom and guidance more than 25 years ago. My story, it's not unlike the many lives of the athletes of Special Olympics. With encouragement and which, with support, they too can reach milestones and achieve greatness in ways that maybe they never thought possible. At Special Olympics Nebraska, we specialize in changing lives every day for more than 5,000 people with intellectual disabilities. And our athletes, they gain the skills and the confidence through their participation with us to face whatever challenge comes their way. And a few things that I am most proud of this year include sending a delegation of close to 100 athletes, coaches, and key volunteers to New Jersey to represent Team Nebraska in the 2014 USA Games. In addition, we provided extra opportunities for our athletes to receive dental screening and dental care. And lastly, we solidified our partnership with the Nebraska School Activities Association, where they voted this spring to revise their bylaws to sanction Special Olympics unified sports in high schools across our state. This has been a very exciting year for our organization. And we are committed to creating as many meaningful opportunities as possible for people with intellectual disabilities. There are 35,000 people in Nebraska who could still benefit from our program, but they're sitting on the sidelines. Skylar, who did a fantastic job singing the national anthem today, she found a place where she fit through her participation in track. She was able to demonstrate her talent and, her, and expend her energy in a meaningful way. Her excellent running ability made it possible for her to be part of Team Nebraska, and she spent a week in New Jersey competing, enjoying the sights, building friendships, and creating memories that will last a lifetime. But there are still thousands of people, just like Skylar in our state, whose lives also could be changed. So while most people struggle with leading a healthy lifestyle, our athletes are at an even greater disadvantage. In fact, research has shown that people with intellectual disabilities have a 40% greater chance of suffering from preventable health conditions. But we are committed to changing this by developing a health program that can be effective with our population. With your support, we can give um, our athletes the tools and the training necessary so that they can lead a healthy life. And lastly, we need to expand our presence in schools and transform communities so everybody can be accepted. It's this type of inclusion that makes it possible for all students to have a meaningful role in their school, whether they're in the special ed department or the general ed department. Unified sports in high school has the power to break down stereotypes and give every student a chance to excel. With that, comes the need for funding to help pay for items like uniforms, transportation, and equipment. Last year, we launched the Champions Together Giving Society, and 25 people joined by committing to a five-year pledge of support. I want to thank you for your giving. With that support, we were able to add unified football to our menu of sports, and we tripled the number of athletes seen at our medical screening in Lincoln. Those are just a few ways that your support has helped us to grow our program. So I invite each of you to join me in becoming a champion for those with intellectual disabilities in Nebraska. Through your support, they'll have a chance to feel accepted, build confidence, and be a champion to someone in their own life. Joan was my champion, and she saw something in me I didn't see in myself. 
Because of that, I stand before you today as a leader, and our athletes deserve that same type of support. So now I'd like to introduce you to a few champions of our movement so you can see firsthand the, um, the impact of what your support can do. That was about halfway through my pregnancy, we diagnosed that Nick was going to be born with Down syndrome. You know, as the mother of two-year-old triplets at the time, it was a little overwhelming to find out we were pregnant and then to find out that we were pregnant with a child who was going to be born with special needs and require heart surgery right away. So at about three months old, Nick had open heart surgery. When we went in for the surgery, the nurse came back about half an hour later and said that uh, they had stopped his heart, which is the normal process for surgery. But it was that instant, that moment, when you think, my child's heart isn't beating anymore. Would he be able to survive through the surgery and, and all of that? Luckily he did. That was a happier part of the day than the first part of the day when it started. I'm Nick. I love from running. I run a few races. I want to go mother. So we started with the Special Olympics Young Athletes Program when Nick was two. The Young Athletes Program provided challenge, it provided motivation, it provided a model of what a kiddo like him should be doing. When Nick was in Young Athletes, I think what it brought out in him was a chance to play with friends when we were going to anything Special Olympics related. And even now, they just on a regular Special Olympics team. Nick is so sports-minded, so into all sports, and he believes that he can compete with anyone. To have Special Olympics gives him a chance to participate in sports in a way that he can compete and feel successful. Um, he can learn, he can be challenged, just like the big kids do. I don't like to think about life without Special Olympics because if Nick didn't have Special Olympics, I think he'd be bored. I think he wouldn't behave as well. I don't think he'd be a kid. He's a kid because he's just like everybody else. He has a team that he belongs to because he has Special Olympics. When you're in the Special Olympics Young Athletes Program, one of the neat things that it does is it starts to open your eyes to Special Olympics. And the more I'm exposed to Special Olympics, the more confidence it gives me that Nick's going to grow up to have a fulfilled life. His official title is Special Olympics Global Messenger. Would you please welcome to the stage my friend, Mr. Andrew Peterson. In elementary school, Most kids couldn't understand me when I spoke. Some laughed and called me names after a decade of physical therapy. I could finally move. I wasn't the fastest kid on the playground. But you know what? No one could run as far as me. I think the most powerful part about Andrew's speech is just that to be able to know that he was in physical therapy for 10 years and he was able to overcome all these different obstacles and be where he is now. Andrew has a diagnosis of fetal alcohol syndrome. When Andrew was adopted at age five, he didn't use a whole lot of words. He had poor coordination. The part of the brain that processes language is, is damaged. Andrew started running Unified Track four years ago, and it proved to be a great opportunity from day one. There was more modeling. I like Unified Sports because Partners push me to be a 
Better athlete, Special Olympics has become a real family activity. Andrew gets to compete. My other children are involved. There's social events. So it's much more than a once a year sporting event, but it's a year around sense of family. You see, Special Olympics means more than winning. It shows everyone that each person with an intellectual disability is not a nobody, but a somebody. When I was pregnant, it was suggested that I should uh, consider putting her into an institution. Personally, for me, I was horrified. This was my child. You know, she wasn't going anywhere but home with me, you know. Nobody else was going to have care for her. I love sports. I love party because people cheer up. I love people cheering up. When she was an infant, she had a preponderance of uh, ear infections. That greatly affected her hearing, which thus affected her speech. And I started saying, there is something more going on here. There is something more going on here. Maybe six, seven years ago, we were at Special Olympics, and Healthy Athletes was there. And I've always been a supporter of Healthy Athletes. So I took her over for the hearing, especially. The head of the department happened to be there that day. Basically what he said was, I have examined her and so have several others. Yes, she has a hearing loss, but there's something more going on there. There was a tumor. The surgeon said he had done this before. So I sat in that waiting room. The surgeon came out a couple hours later and he said they got the tumor all out. And the results did come back eventually that it was benign. The aim of, of Healthy Hearing, the program, is to get everyone's hearing screened. Um, and the nice thing is, is it's free and accessible to all of the athletes. So it's all day long. Um, we have um, supervisors, so other audiologists helping out. We have students that are learning to do the screening aspect here as well. Um, and um, we're able to talk to them a little bit more about what the next step is. I have got the friends in the bus Special Olympics for the older adults, it's more than a program, it becomes a way of life. The athletes gradually integrate, and you begin to integrate with the family. Special Olympics may feel good, and Special Olympics may feel happy. Wow, great stuff, right? Let's hear for Nick, our local star of that movie. Nick, woo, go Nick. All right. So hello, my name is Jeff Shannon. And my name at home though is different, and that's, my name is Bupa. And that name was given to me by my son Brady, right there, uh, who has a speech delay because he has Down syndrome. <clears throat> when I tell people that Brady has Down syndrome, I get a variety of responses. People aren't sure if they should show sympathy or they should pretend like they hear that sort of thing all the time. When they eventually get comfortable with me and my story, they often come to the same question. And that question is, did you know? So I'm gonna try and answer that question for you today. The day that uh, Brady was born was a typical day at the office. My wife called at one o'clock in the afternoon, says, I think I'm going into labor, you should come home. I say, yes, dear, I'll be right there. She calls back at 5 p.m. and says, I'm serious, you need to get home or you're gonna miss this. <laughs> Six hours later, Brady's born and it's the most terrifying, exhilarating moment of my entire life. Now, at this point in the story, I'm supposed to tell you that uh, I fell in love with him and I couldn't wait to hold him. 
What I'm not supposed to do is be completely honest and say that he scared the heck out of me. Uh, he was small and fragile looking. His skin was yellow. He had a kind of pointy, misshapen head and frankly looked more like an alien than a little baby. But what do I know? I'd never actually held a baby before that. At some point in the process, uh, our midwife, a family friend, and a person who, let's say, has a gift for being blunt, uh, wraps Brady in a blanket, hands him to Jen, and says, you know he has Down syndrome, right? Around 2 o'clock in the morning, Jen and I are in the recovery room, and we're alone for the first time. We're crying and talking about how Brady's life, and frankly our own lives, are going to be different than what we had ever expected. We didn't know anything about raising a baby, and we certainly didn't know anything about raising a baby with special needs. We felt like we were the only ones, and not knowing what to do or what was going to happen and feeling like you're the only one is, was the scariest thing of all. At some point, we decide that we should get some rest because we're going to have family and friends coming in the morning. Jen rolls over on, in her bed, and I roll over on that little plastic couch that they make for dads. Um, <laughs> And I can hear her crying to herself there in the dark. And I want so desperately to say something that's going to make her feel better. Well, he can be in the Special Olympics, I say. And Jen rolls over and wipes her eyes and smiles for the very first time since this whole thing's happened. And that really is the moment when our lives changed. Fast forward today, Brady is a very typical six-year-old little boy. He is full of energy. Uh, he's excited about life, and at school, he loves to show off on the playground with his legendary pull-ups. <laughs> and through the Special Olympics Young Athletes Program, we have met numerous families just like ours, and we've discovered that they share the exact same story that we do, that we weren't alone. They felt the same way, and that the Special Olympics was that little glimmer of hope that, in, that for them was in their, what they thought was their darkest hour. The Special Olympics serves as that place for where we knew that our kids were going to have a field of their own, somewhere they could compete among their friends and that they would be 100% accepted. About a year ago, at a luncheon like this, I learned a couple of things that made, motivated me to get more involved. The first was the real definition of a champion, and that is a person who fights for a cause on behalf of someone else. I also learned that a, st a, st a statistic that Special Olympic athletes, adults who are Special Olympic athletes, are 52% of them have jobs versus 10% that do not. And that is desperately what I want for my family is, and for my children is that they can find meaningful work and, and get that chance to contribute to society like the rest of us hope to do. And I'm confident that the Special Olympics will make that a reality. So back to the question, did I know? I didn't know that I was going to get the privilege of being someone's bupa and that he would teach me so much about being a man. I also didn't know that the Special Olympics was going to play such a profound role in my life and in my family's life and teach me so much about being a champion. I want to thank the Special Olympics Nebraska for what you've done for my family. I want to thank you for listening to my story. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. Wyatt was supposed to talk, but he is sick. I hope he gets to feeling better soon, and I will speak for him and all the athletes. I am Jason, and welcome to Champions Together. Who are the champions in your life? I have two champions that I want you to know about my mom and dad. They taught me about kindness. They taught me about understanding, about God's grace. They took me into their family and loved me, and I loved them back. It is love with no strings attached. Because of them, I am alive today. And because of Special Olympics, I am a champion. Let me tell you about it. My story begins when I was placed in foster care. I was a baby. I came 
wearing only a wet diaper. I had been abused. I was covered in bruises and had a fever from the bruises. I had been strangled that, red, that left a red ring around my neck and I was forced to drink bleach. All of the skin had peeled off inside and around my mouth and chin. I was very weak and could not sit up by myself. I was starved. I, only, I weighed 13 pounds at 13 months old. And look at me now. <laughs> this is what awesome looks like. <laughs> I had nightmares every night for nearly two years. After two years, the courts decided to end parents' rights and my nightmare stopped and I was safe. I was placed in emergency foster care for three days, but stayed my lifetime. I was able to forgive my biological parent for the abuse. She got mad because I cried. She didn't know how to take care of me, but she needed help too. My foster mom and dad were told that they could adopt me. I was almost three years old and they knew that I had disabilities. Mom said they didn't want to adopt just any kid. They wanted me. Mom said they needed me more than I needed them, but I know we needed each other. I liked school, but, or I liked school and played the drums and band. Because I was always such a big kid, the teachers expected more from me than what I could do. I was teased and bullied. You might think, you're so big, how could you be bullied? Believe me, it happens. Then something wonderful happened and my world changed. I joined Special Olympics. I was a freshman and my principal, Pat Moore, invited me to go bowling. I have competed in 11 sports, including basketball, volleyball, um, bowling, unified bowling, equestrian, swimming, track, and field. And last year was my first year in competing in powerlifting, where I earned three medals. This year I competed for the first time in unified golf with my brother-in-law as my partner. And we took home gold medals. Special Olympics gave me the chance to sing my first solo, the national anthem. I have been singing ever since. Special Olympics gave me the opportunity to travel. I have been to Washington, DC, North Carolina, and Ames, Iowa for Special Olympics events. Last week, I went to Indianapolis where I successfully completed training and now I will represent, Team Nebra or will ne represent Nebraska in powerlifting and Team USA in the 2015 World Games in Los Angeles, California. There are only 12 powerlifters going in the United States and I am one of them. Nebraska is sending four athletes and I am the only powerlifter going from Nebraska. Special Olympics offers more than just sports. Special Olympics has a health program too, where athletes can get free physicals through MedFest and Brian health services. Special Olympics Nebraska offers healthy athletes. It is free to the athletes. Four years ago, opening eyes discovered a cyst in my eye and I had to have eye surgery and it saved the sight in my eye. I got new sports glasses too. <laughs> Dr. Westerman at Special Smiles made me a mouth guard and he told me I needed to get my wisdom teeth pulled. Wisdom teeth don't make you smart. <laughs> they just make your jaw hurt. 
Healthy Habits has helped me eat the right foods. No more french fries or chips. I drink water instead of pop, and I have lost 84 pounds. Playing sports has helped too. Special Olympics opened up a whole new life for me and my family. You see, in Special Olympics, it doesn't matter if you are fast or slow, big or little, tall or short, or if your body doesn't work right. I am accepted just the way I am, a big guy in a big body with a big heart, with big dreams just like everyone else. Special Olympics is more than just competing. It is more than medals and ribbons. Special Olympics is giving chances. Special Olympics is understanding. Special Olympics is belonging. It is making friends, it is giving hope, it is inspiring greatness. But most of all, Special Olympics is changing my life. I invite you to belong to Special Olympics. You can be an athlete, a unified partner, a volunteer, a coach, or a donor. John Kennedy said, anyone can do something, and everyone should try. How and what you decide to do, you will become a champion for changing lives. Thank you for coming, and thank you for listening to my story. I want to thank Jason, especially for helping me know what awesome looks like. <laughs> and Jeff, to you too for your stories today. They make a huge difference for us. I'm Heather Wright, and I'm a Special Olympics Nebraska board member. Um, we've been talking about the theme of champions today, and I've been blessed with a lot of great champions in my life in very different aspects. Um, I think the champion I want to recognize today is my husband, Scott. He's been a great champion, not only for me, in pushing me to pursue my passion around Special Olympics and everything that it's done for our family, but he's a wonderful champion to Nick in everything that Nick does academically, athletically, and socially. So thank you for being a great champion to us, Scott. You've heard the full Nebraska Special Olympics story today and met some of our wonderful people. And it's my privilege now to ask you to make a financial investment to support our day-to-day -day operations. This is not just an investment in Special Olympics Nebraska. It truly is an investment in our own futures. And I believe it's one of the most important investments that any of us can make. To build a stronger foundation for expanding our programs and to provide a stable future for Special Olympics Nebraska, we've created our Champions Together Society. If you've been inspired by what you've seen today, I ask you to consider joining me this afternoon as a member of our society. I'll explain a little bit more after the table hosts have distributed the pledge cards. So if table hosts, if you'd please pass those out now. Give you a minute to do that. So some of you who are here today attended the event last year and pledged your support, and I want to thank you sincerely. We would ask today that you consider either adding a year more to your previous multi-year pledge, um, paying your pre previous pledge off early, or increasing the amount of your pledge. As I go through the different levels of our Champions Together Society, please note there's a special section at the bottom of the pledge card, especially for you who've already pledged. Let me walk you through your pledge card now. Starting at the top of the card, the Champions Together pledge level names are meant to give you a sense for what your contributions can do. Your contribution will go toward the unrestricted operating funds of Special Olympics Nebraska. So the first giving level, supporting an athlete, is a pledge of $1,000 each year for five years, which is approximately $83 a month. Your gift would let us provide opportunities for training, competition, and expand and improve our education and health programs for one new athlete like Jason for each of the next five years. 
The next giving level, our Empower a Team pledge, is a pledge of $10,000 a year for five years. You would allow us to support a whole team of athletes for each of the next five years, giving them even more opportunities for the training, travel, and competition throughout the year, as well as access to more education and health programs. The last level, Transform a Community, is a pledge of $25,000 a year for five years. Through this pledge, we'd be able to transform our entire community by reaching all people with intellectual disabilities in Nebraska. We'll be able to expand our education programs to even more schools across the state and other activities and sports programs that promote inclusiveness and acceptance. If you're joining together today as a member of the Champions Together Society, my personal thanks for your generous support. Multi-year gifts are so important to us because they guarantee the future of our programs for our athletes and help us reach other people with intellectual disabilities in our state. Although I started by introducing the Champions Together Society, we know and respect that you may prefer to give at a different level, and so we provide the next line just for you. On this line, please tell us how much you would like to give and for how many years. We truly appreciate whatever level of support that you can provide, and we ask that you make your first payment on your pledge today. Perhaps you'd like to consider a gift of stock or something else, or you simply have some great ideas for us. If so, please check the next box, the one that says, please contact me, I have thoughts to share. As you're finishing filling out your card, please know that whatever you give, including the gift of your time, we sincerely appreciate it on behalf of the athletes we serve. When you're finished, if you'd pass your pledge envelopes back to your table captain, I'll give you a few minutes to take care of that and then I'll turn it back over to John nicely to wrap up for us. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you're still filling out your form, uh, feel free to do that. There's no hurry to leave. But uh, some of you have to go to work, so we understand that as well. Thanks for joining us today. Aren't you glad you came? It was a tremendous luncheon today. And becoming a champion for Special Olympics Nebraska is our opportunity, and I hope you leave inspired about the work that we are doing. Have a great day. God bless.